Hi, in this video I will show you how to create the eyebrows you see in here. This is preset from the hair library. So if you want, you can just append this to your scene. We will create that from scratch. And this preset is using the guide mesh. So by moving this object, it is guiding the hair. I will hide this now, jump to empty collection and shift A, add plane. Then in edit mode, I will scale this in the Y direction. Then add like around four subdivisions. Then I will unhide the object, move uh, this between the eyes, tap into edit mode again, select everything and move this in front of the eye. So now I will rotate this 90 degrees and now it should be close to the eye. We can start snapping this to the mesh surface. You can use uh, Blender snapping. I will use the draft X-ray option. And in here I will select to snap to this single object in here. So if I move this, it will snap. I can use mirror tool to move this like so, or you can use the soft selection. So with the soft selection, if you grab this, then scroll up to reduce the size. It is not intuitive that you have to scroll up to reduce the size, but this is how it is. And uh, now we have the base mesh ready. Maybe I will reduce the, uh, I will add maybe subdivision a bit more to this geometry. So in object mode, I will press Ctrl 1 to subdivide and then snap this with the shrink wrap on top. So select the project method, positive and negative. And in the target, select the, your character head. So now using Control shift h we'll add hair with track mesh. And the initial offset is OK. And you see the strands are generated. And on top of that, we have this guide mesh. So if I move this guide mesh, Maybe with snapping disabled, you see it is guiding the hair strands. So, okay, now let's go to the hair themselves, tweak some parameters. So the hair system was automatically added with a bunch of deformers. In here we can bump up density. Then maybe we can switch the randomization, the distribution to Poisson disk. We'll paste the density. And in here we still have some gaps, so I want to fill this up. So I will bump this up even more. And now this will be very dense. So we will remove random strands that are closer than this minimum distance. So the next deformer is track to mesh. It will just guide the hair tips toward this guide mesh. Then we have the align tilt. I will enable that and UV region to assign UVs. Okay, so now the biggest issue right now is that the default texture does not work uh, too good for the eyebrows. We'll jump to the shading and this is the default texture. We can bake new one using hair tool baking. So in the hair bake, press import baking scene. Okay. And you will see in the scene list, this is the old one with the character. This is the new imported one. And now we don't want to bake those hair objects, so hide this collection long hair. And there are a few other collections. So we will select this one and bake this one to the texture. In my case, only opacity is OK. Just plug in any path where you want to save your textures. And uh, in my case, I want to uh, bake in small size since it will be very small on the character. Press bake and after like second it should bake this to the texture you can see in here. So now let's jump to the original scene using this switch to main scene. And uh, we have to now apply this texture to the hair material. Uh, if you go to the material properties we can search for the hair tool default material but how do we know that this object is using uh, this hair tool material if there is no material, no material assigned to mesh? 
Well, the way it works, it, if there is geometry generated by modifiers, you have to assign this material on the last modifier. So you can see the profile generation is happening in, the, in this modifier, and this is where the material is assigned. So you can see the same material in the hair system profile settings. You can see we are using this hair tool default material. So we can now assign this default material to mesh. And this will allow us to edit the properties. Now, the one more issue is that this material is used by eight objects on the scene. If I unhide, you see this object is using the same material. So if I change this to use different texture, we do not want to affect the hair on the top. So we will create material copy by click clicking this button. We can rename the copy to browns. And now this is assigned to mesh, but we want to assign this new material to the hair system. So in the profile, switch the default hair tool material to the new one. And now you will see if I change anything, it will affect the hair strands correctly. So the idea is to switch this default texture to the new baked one. Now you see the effect already takes place on the eyebrows, but also we have to change the UVs. So let's preview the baked texture. Now to edit UV, just click this hair UV button on the very right. And as you can see, shift delete reset UVs. So we will reset those, reset those default UVs with shift delete, then drag by the corner of the big box to move this into the position. Then left click to add a bit more UV boxes like so and then enter to save. You see the texture UVs uh, are updated. We can jump back to hair modeling. So this is quite uniform. So after track to mesh, I will add the noise deformer and this is way too big. So I will scale global scale parameter 100 times. And uh, now I will zero out uniform amplitude at per strand amplitude. Then I will add them back slowly. So maybe a bit of uniform amplitude to make to add some flow to the strands. And then maybe on top of that, I will add per strand amplitude. Now, the one issue I can see is that I don't want as much noise in this place. So I will try to use the length mask to mask the noise amplitude. So hopefully those strands are kind of shorter, so they should automatically receive the zero. Uh, the amplitude should be multiplied by zero value on the length mask. And now another issue is that the noise is kind of moving some of the strands uh, outside of the surface, but some are moved inside. So after the noise, I will add the push out deformer. And this is way too big, so zero maybe zero point zero two. Let's see without this modifier with not much difference, so maybe a bit more. And okay, at least it should prevent clipping of the hair inside the character geometry. So I will move this mesh now closer the head surface. I can use mirror tool or soft selection. Mirror tool is like free add-on you can use for modeling. And let's see how this looks now. A bit more like eyebrows. And okay. So okay the noise is a bit much in here let's see without with so let's tweak the settings. Maybe smaller uniform noise. I think this looks kind of better. Then we do not have, I think, enough geometry still on those strands. So I will go back to the strand generation. Let's bump this up even more. So now it is a bit more uniform. And uh, instead of now editing the guide mesh in edit mode, you can do this also in sculpt mode. So we'll go to sculpt mode. 
in the draft x-ray I will enable sculpt mode also so we can see the mesh maybe reduce the opacity and I will jump to the crease the pinch brush pinch this part to make it smaller like that just to show you that you do not have to use the only the edit mode but I will jump to edit mode anyway and move those strands to give them some some flow so i want to move them like in this this direction and like that so i think that can it now works already maybe make taper i will taper this slightly and uh, this is this is basically it we created some kind of basic eyelashes you could always add a bit more uh, modifiers on top. Uh, maybe the last option I wanted to add is the at the very end I could add the mirror to mirror this. And uh, okay, so if the mirror is last, it will mirror everything like it is. But we can move mirror one position up. So this way, uh, first we will mirror the strands. Then UV regions will assign different regions to the left and the different UV regions to the right. And uh, okay, so I wanted to also show you the uh, few things about uh, how to tweak those uh, high strands. So the base and the roots of the strands are spawned from the plane we created at the beginning. So if I go to edit mode, I can move this base mesh, maybe disable the for this object we'll use unique settings and disable the x-ray overlay so you can see when i move this now it will affect the position of the roots but if i move the guide object it is affecting the tips so this is how you how you have full control over the hair look uh, the, another thing i wanted to show is that currently Hair strands are attached to this plane, but you can always use Ctrl Shift H, transfer hair system to empty curve, and visually not much not much changed, but the hair system is now attached to this uh, to this curve object. We still have the source root object and then guide for the tips. Uh, okay, and uh, what I wanted to also show that this guide object automatically will have some shape keys created. This first shape key is for guiding the hair in non-destructive way. You can treat this as kind of sculpt layers. So you could add one more layer with shape key, then enable this option to, to model in kind of additive way. And if I change like some look on the hair, and I am afraid that it may break the hair look, you can model this on the shape key. And then if I, if you want, you can just see how this affects the hair by changing this new shape key. And uh, maybe let's go about optimization of the hair strands. So let's switch to the solid mode, shift H to isolate. And we see we have almost 5,000 trees. If I show you the wireframe, we have quite a bit of subdivision uh, so we have to reduce this a lot we can reduce this to get uh, way less polycount so there are two options in the strand generation there is the subdivision steps so i will set this to zero and with that basically each strand is made only from two points one on the root but one on the tip but you can see there is still subdivision in the middle Subdivision in the middle comes from the profile. There is this resolution slider. If I set this to zero, now there will be no additional subdivision in the center. But I do not want straight strands, so I will add one subdivision, but not in the profile. I will add it, this in the strand generation. We will subdivide those ones. So now each strand is made from uh, three points. And this should already optimize this polycount. So we went from almost five to, to uh, 1,000 trees. So it is way more uh, better. Let's see how this will look now on the character. 
so visually not much changed but it is way uh, lower poly and uh, the last thing i wanted maybe to show is that why the texture is looking kind of weird if you see it is kind of wavy the idea is that the, this waviness helps to hide the hair card look so you cannot see almost where each hair card starts right now but if you change this texture to more uniform looking you will see that it will be way easier and uglier because you will see the hair cards uh, more clearly so to see this effect i will just quickly jump to the hair bake switch to baking scene we have those four hair objects each of them has uh, four hair systems so uh, there is like one system generating few strands then another one generating a bunch of clumps not sure why even then there is this one system and the last system is responsible for tapering so the last system is actually the filter kind so this means it is not generating new strands it is just affecting the strands above now the system is used on four objects so all of those are using the same uh, system that will trim the strands so anyway i will reduce the randomization tweak maybe the trimming on the root then i will disable randomization on the tip maybe shorten them slightly and let's bake and see how this works now on the hair so i will bake a texture switch to main scene and you see the texture is uniform and way uglier looking uh, you can see each hair card now quite uh, maybe it is not that bad but you can see that each hair card more or less where it starts so i think that covers uh, everything i wanted to show about hair uh, system and about the eyebrows see ya